What is up, coordinators and naturals? I am just a simple new type, and in this episode, we are cruising through the Astrayverse as we cover Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Frame Astrays. Last time, we followed the Martians, Lo and Jess, as they dealt with members of Phantom Pain. In this adventure, we will learn of the Asian bloc and the gorillas whose land has become a battlefield for the Second Alliance Plant War. We will learn of the gorilla Trojan, who will pilot the Astray Green Frame. So let's get into this. Cosmic Era 73, East Asia Republic, Preserve Number 13. Serpent Tail is hired to help out the Alliance against a group of gorillas piloting Reistus. Remember, the Reista consists of 40% parts of the M1 Astray. It was created by Yoon of the Junk Guild. These units do not have the special backpack hard points that Yoon has, nor do these have the better performance of her unit. Both Guy and three Socius are piloting the Hyperion G. The Cat 1 XG Hyperion G is a ground variant of the Hyperion unit that Canard Parnes pilots during Gundam Seed X Astray. It is more or less similar in design of the original Hyperion, but has a different skirt design and shortened V-fin. Kennard also used a broken Armure Lumiere shield, which rather than completely protect the unit, it only covers a portion and thus requires less power. It seems they took Kennard's flight data and applied it to this unit as it has a tiny Armure Lumiere shield. It also has Vulcans, a ROM Technica beam knife, a beam submachine gun, a beam cannon, and a 52mm machine gun. Remember, the Socius clones are all genetically designed to be subservient to naturals and can't hurt them. We really need to get our hands on a stray bee so we can deep dive into these clones. While the two do their thing, a young gorilla by the name of Trojan is spying on Serpent Tail from afar. He is currently in his Astray green frame. More on this unit soon. In the hangar, Elijah notes that he isn't a fan of Kennard. Three Socius tells the team to head to the briefing room. I am not sure if I made this clear in our earlier Astray videos, but Loretta is Kazahana's mom. She randomly left EA and the two later joined Serpent Tail. Kazahana is now eight years old in CE73 as well, and the artist took note and made this apparent in her character design. It is quite subtle though. The Socius clone mentions that Zaft is currently getting a new commander and they happen to outsource the command to a mercenary. Not only that, the commander seems to be a natural. Elijah mentions that perhaps they know of the Socius clone's inability to kill naturals and wonders if this is a strategy on Zaf's part. This is where Serpent Tail comes into play, essentially. Guy wonders if it is ready. He is referring to the Blue Frame third. Meanwhile, Trojan is spying on a Zaft base. One soldier stares right at him. This is the new Zaft commander, Leon's Graves. The guerrilla commander tells him they have been spotted and to run. His commander happens to be Barry Ho. In Destiny Astray, we saw Barry save Yoon and assisted USSA during their war for independence. He was also a part of the Three Ships Alliance during the First War. Leon's knows the guerrillas are close by, of course. He is excited to be in the Asian bloc. Also, his glasses are missing the frames on his left eye. If we look at a colored illustration of this character design, it seems that this is an eye patch. We meet Rudolf Wittgenstein and Alec Ladd, who now are under command of Leon's. Rudolf particularly doesn't want to take orders from filthy naturals. Leon's wants the Alliance to help them take out all the gorillas. Of course, if the Alliance doesn't comply, Zaft will do what they want. Leon plans to have the gorillas do a pincer move on the Alliance and essentially use both forces. Alec finds this very cowardly, but Leon's is a merc, and he views war no different than business. We cut to the battlefield where their plan is being carried out. The Alliance takes on the gorillas while Zaft comes from the rear. Three Socius wants to remove himself from the battlefield, but they seem to be surrounded. The Alliance approaches Trojan in the Astray Green Frame. The MBF P04 Gundam Astray Green Frame was originally a part of the G Project, just like the Red, Blue, and Gold Frame. There was only one of the original Astrays that we haven't talked about, and we'll discuss when we get to Astray Versus. X Astray, Delta Astray, and any of the designs created by Lo aren't technically Astrays. This unit is equipped with Vulcans, a beam rifle, and a beam saber, like the other base Astrays. But unlike the others, the Green Frame has a twin sword rifle and an axe. We will see the Twin Sword Rifle in action in the next episode. Of course, it will involve Lo. This unit wasn't originally green and was painted green by Barry Ho as he wanted to use this unit in the jungle. It also has an improved version of the AI system that we saw in the Strike Rouge. Elijah is in his Zaku Phantom. I don't think we talked about this unit even though it was introduced during Destiny. The ZG MF-1001 Elijah's Zaku Phantom is a modified Zaku Phantom that Kate Madigan gave Elijah. This version has phase shift armor which gives its unique red color and doesn't apply to the entire unit to help conserve energy. Just like Elijah's Jin, this Zaku Phantom also has his head buster sword. This unit also could use the Meteor unit which we saw earlier in our Astray coverage. He is approached by Rudolf Wittgenstein and his Goof Custom. This is the mass-produced version 
version of the goof custom we saw Hein pilot. Rest in peace, Team Revolution. He says he wants to kill Elijah's beautiful face. I'm not making a joke there. He, he's literally calling his face beautiful. It confuses Elijah, but they begin fighting. Guy is fighting Alec, who is piloting a custom Kerberos Buku Hound. Barry is scouting and commanding from afar. He tells Trojan that they were set up by Zaft and they should get out of there. Barry was alerted because Rudolph pushed too far into enemy territory. Leons notes this as well. Their pincer move has failed. Elijah tells the team to fall back. Rudolph pushes forward. He yells out that he will scar Elijah's beautiful face. This confuses Elijah even more as he already has a scar on his beautiful face. While Alec and Guy are fighting, Leons comes in and shoots Guy in the back. Alec finds this cowardly. Kazahana tells Guy that the mobile suit is ready. They set off an explosion as a distraction while Guy gets into his new mobile suit. The Blue Frame 3rd. The MBF P033 3rd. Gundam Astray Blue Frame 3rd, like the name suggests, is the third modified Blue Frame. Remember, each modification is designed for the environment that it is fighting in. For the jungles of Earth, beam weapons cause way too many fires, so they are out of the question. So it uses physical blades. It has improved Vulcans and a new V-Fin for advanced communications in the jungle. Rudolph gets frustrated and rushes Guy. Guy is able to take off the arm of the Goof Custom. Leons is frustrated and has his team retreat. Everyone congratulates Kazahana for being able to pilot the blue frame to Guy. She wonders if they didn't attack Zaft simply because she was involved in the mission. Guy along with Reed tell her that Serpent Tail doesn't go off and chase, nor do they try to reduce numbers on the battlefield. This is because if they were to take out a squad, then the enemy would just send reinforcements, but if they are wounded, their numbers will remain the same and they will also be weakened. Not sure if I buy this strategy, but I will go with it. Essentially, Serpent Tail is good, but they can't take on a squad of Zaft forces. They are designed for small incursions. Three comes in and tells the team that Fujiyama, a munitions company that helps the Alliance, is going to help them out with the gorilla issue. We are introduced to Fujiyama's men. Jist Elways and Lucas O'Neill. His name in Japanese is Jisto, and I'm compelled to call him Jist. But like most names, I have no idea. I'll just call him Elways for now. Elways is a half coordinator whose madness takes over when he is in his Sigu assault similar to some of you when you get behind the wheel. The ZGMF 515AS Sigu assault is similar to the Jin assault type and has additional armor on its legs and chest. It has a backpack to increase performance and like the Sigu is mainly used by ace pilots. This is a Zaft unit but the EA captured a unit and assigned it to Elways. It is equipped with a heavy blade, 28mm Vulcan system, a 76mm assault machine gun, and a shoulder shield. Lucas O'Donnell is a former Zaft Ace pilot who is assisting EA. We will soon learn that the implant inside his neck is a bomb. He is piloting the strike E that we have seen Sven pilot. He tells Elways his hubris will get him killed. Both Elways and Lucas begins their assault on a Zaft squad. One thing I want to talk about before these Zaku warriors die is the Command Zaku CCI. The ZGM-1000 R4 Command Zaku CCI or Command Control and information is a Zaku warrior with the EX R4 command wizard pack. Remember, the Zaku Millennium line can use wizard packs. It is a giant sensor and communication array. This unit has a giant satellite antenna instead of the shoulder shield. This unit's communication systems also work when in-jammer cancelers are on the battlefield. It has a non-combat antenna and only four grenades, so it relies on other units to protect it. So anyways, the other units do not protect it, and Elways and Lucas tears through the mobile suits. The gorillas are still spying on Zaft. Back at their base, Leons has already fixed Rudolph's goof cut. Custom. He says that a man named Sue is coming and he doesn't want to have to rely on him. This man is known to have killed both enemies and allies. While they are talking, a soldier rushes in and tells Leons that the reconnaissance team was just destroyed. He mentions that the EA usually doesn't operate in this way and wonders who it could be. He also notes that those dead soldiers' salary will go to waste and upsets Alec in the process. Outside, Trojan and the gorillas notes that Zaft is suddenly in a rush. Back with EA, Elways and Lucas meets up with Serpent Tail. Socius tells them that their attack caused a lot of attention. While they are talking, an enemy approaches. It happens to be the green frame. Trojan wants to know if they intend to burn down the area. Guy tells them that this isn't their intention. He tells him if he wants them to go away, then make them go away. The green frame goes in to attack Guy, who is in the blue frame. Trojan fires at Guy. He uses his arm blade to deflect the attack. Trojan realizes that the blue frame has anti-coating. Guy goes in for the attack. 
Guy and Trojan continue their fight. Guy is one hell of a fighter, but Trojan is able to dodge most of his attacks. Everyone notices that his mobile suit has AI-assisted capabilities. Reed tells the team that it is clearly the natural-based operating system developed by Orb. This is the operating system that Kira Yamato helped complete during his visit to Orb, which eventually was integrated with the M1 Astray and Strike Rouge. But this version seems to be better than the stock operating system. Only one person has the ability to do this. It was low. Zaft receives intel that a gorilla has engaged in an attack at an EA base. Leons thinks that he could use this to his advantage and get rid of both the Alliance and the Gorillas before Sue arrives. Remember, Leons is a natural working with Zaft forces to help fight against the Socius clones, who are genetically created to never hurt naturals. More intel comes in, he is frightened. It seems Sue is going to engage the Gorillas before coming to the Zaft base. He fears for what happens when Sue is left alone. Back at the battle, Guy asks Trojan if he ever considered why he was given that unit. Lo is like a less horny golden boy. When he helps you, you know it is for good reasons. So if Trojan has an astray unit, it must be for a good reason. However, Trojan simply wants to battle. He is too arrogant and thinks his operating system will save him. But Guy is able to see a weak spot and takes the opportunity to attack his unit. Trojan's green frame goes down as he passes out. He wakes up in a jail cell to find Loretta and Kazahana giving him some food to eat. He sees both EA and Zaft as the enemy, but Kazahana says that he should try to solve a problem rather than starting by labeling people enemies. Just wants to kill him, but Guy thinks that his unit will be key to protecting this area. Lucas seems to be more on Guy's wavelength than Gist. As Orb is neutral and isolated, their mobile suits are designed for defensive measures. The green frame is no different. This is also the reason that he lost the battle. Guy knew this and took advantage of it, while Trojan just tried to use raw strength to win. As Kazahana and Loretta talk to Trojan, Elijah comes rushing in. He first wonders why Kazahana and Loretta are inside the jail cell with him. He came down to let Trojan know that one of the guerrilla villages is going up in flames. Just Lucas, Guy, and Socius head out to protect the guerrilla base. Just doesn't really want to help, but they have no choice considering they have their strongest mobile suit locked away on their base, so most likely they have no defenses. They go in and attack, but they notice a Kerberos Zaku warrior is destroying an Astray JG Custom. This is piloted by Sue. As the Zaku destroys the civilian Astray, out of the cockpit comes Barry Ho. He is able to jump out in time. Sue gets out of his mobile suit and asks Barry about his fighting style. He wants to see it for himself, and the two begin fighting with their fists. Back at the base, Trojan wants to go out and fight, but they don't want to put him in harm's way. He is upset for putting himself in this position. He thinks of his master, Barry Ho. A voice says, let him pilot his mobile suit. Out of nowhere comes Lo. He wants to upgrade the green frame. Barry is still fighting Sue. The artist of this manga makes the dude look very stretchy looking. Sue penetrates Barry with his fist. Heh. Just and Lucas come to find two people just punching one another. They use Vulcans on Sue, but he jumps back in his mobile suit and runs away. Guy recognizes the injured Barry Ho. Back at the Zaft base, their repair bill is going up like crazy. Leons looks at his arms astray and says that they won't be able to destroy this unit. Meanwhile, back at the EA base, Lo creates the twin sword rifle. We talked about this a little bit last episode. But this is a 3-in-1 weapon that could be a beam rifle, twin axe, and a twin beam sword. This is the Swiss Army Knife of beam rifles. They finally allow Trojan to head out in the green frame. He finds Guy watching over Barry's dead body. He blames himself for being irresponsible for not being there for him. Back at the base, Leons is chastising Sue for going out on his own. He states that his mission always has been to wipe out the opposition. To Leons, he just views everything in dollars, and Sue sees this. He gets back into his Kerbero Zaku warrior and takes off towards the EA base. They get word that Sue is heading towards them. Just is hot-headed and decides to go out in a Sigu assault against direct orders. He really wants to fight Sue and the Zaku. The two engage in battle. Lo suggests that the Sigu pilot has his heart only half in the battle. Elijah and three Socius launch as well. Lucas also launches in his Strike E with the IWSP pack. When using the IWSP, the Strike E can also be equipped with either the Strike or Dual Gundam's beam rifle, as it is optional handheld weapon. Trojan decides that he is going to go and talk to Zaft. He isn't going to be hot-headed anymore, and he is going to try to do what is best for his village. He wants to begin opening communication up with both EA and Zaft. After his fight with Guy, he will try to use his words 
when approaching Zaft. Gist continues his battle with Sue. Lucas comes in to help out Gist. He says two heads are better than one. Get it? Because the Kerbero Saku warrior has more than one head? Nope. Still dumb. The two double team Sue, but he is able to hold his own against the two. Lucas says that he is the one that he is looking for, and the two melee one another. He is somewhat ominous as he asks Sue if he wants to fight more freely. Sue retreats. Gist goes to chase, but Lucas tells him to see the bigger picture. Gist is unsure what he is planning. Guy and Trojan go to the Zaft base to try to talk. Some Zaft soldiers tease Trojan, but Leons tells them to shut up. He seems to be over commanding coordinators. The two try to talk peace. Fujiyama is heading in to finally bring supplies to the EA base. Meanwhile, Lucas, Gist, and three associates are walking through the jungle, with Lucas taking the lead. Back at EA, Guy returns to the base. He lets Lo know that Zaft and the gorillas are working out negotiations as they speak. The two look at one of Fujiyama's latest creations, the Raigo Gundam. The GAT FJ-108 Raigo Gundam is a Fujiyama mobile suit that was built off the Strike E Gundam. It could use striker packs and is equipped with variable phase shift armor. What makes this unit unique is its three Acteon Industry striker packs. The Speculum striker pack is similar to the L striker pack. Unlike the L striker, this thing is heavy and could add on missile pods, beam sabers, and more without losing too much speed. The Calibrin striker is a close combat striker pack. It uses the Panzer Eisen Kai rocket anchor and a beam boomerang stored in its forearm along with a very big sword. The Sunbullet striker pack is a heavy weapon striker pack that uses a planned Sabbat bazooka similar to the Calamity Gundam. It also has an A-tube missile launcher on the back and a hyper impulse beam cannon. The Raigo is equipped with a CIWS, a 57mm high energy beam rifle, a shield, and a Schneider combat knife. Lowe mentions that with Guy in this unit, he doesn't think anyone would be able to hold on for long. Guy responds by saying he would prefer to not be in a position where he would have to hold out long to begin with. Just Lucas and Socius head out towards a meeting place to meet with Zaf to continue with peace talks when suddenly they stumble across Sue once again. He takes out the strikey's arm. Sue begins fighting Lucas once again. For a moment, Sue made him experience fear. When they go to meet with Leons, they tell him that they were attacked by a Zaft soldier. He is piloting his arms astray. The PMC 1L Arms Astray PMC Custom is a modified civilian astray DSSD custom. This unit is originally designed more as a mobile worker, but Leons completely customized the unit for combat. It has enhanced sensors in the head for sniping, Extra power has been added to the propulsion system for longer use than the civilian astray. He is with Alec, who is in his Kerberos Baku. He acknowledges it is Sue and tells them that Zaft now considers them a deserter. He apologizes, but Gist is once again hot-headed and begins attacking. During the skirmish, Lucas takes out Alex's Baku and Leon's destroys Strikey's arm. Trojan in the green frame comes in and yells at them, I leave for one minute and you assholes begin fighting. Trojan, probably. Back at the EA base, Lo is fighting Sue. He is able to jump into the cockpit of the Raigo Gundam equipped with the Speculum Striker Pack. As he tries to make his escape, Guy in the blue frame third comes in to stop him. The conflict continues in the jungle. Trojan yells at Leon's, asking him how he could turn a peace talk into a battle. Leon gives Trojan an economics lesson that is way above his head. Leon's is all about that money. He is just trying to get things done and sees Trojan as a child throwing a tantrum. Back at the EA base, Guy in the blue frame third is fighting Sue in the stolen Raigo Gundam with the Speculum Striker Pack. The two are in a furious battle. Sue is able to make Guy struggle. Even Lo, who is watching, notes that it isn't good that this pilot can keep up with Guy. Suddenly, Elijah in his Zaku custom comes in and helps Guy. He, however, becomes a target for Sue as he fires a barrage of missiles. Guy swiftly comes in and protects Elijah. He flees into the jungle, making Sue chase him. Guy is trying to take the battle off base so no one will get hurt. Elijah, with his pride slightly broken, goes off to help Guy once again. Back in the jungle, Trojan and Leons are still fighting and yelling their vague ideals about war at one another. Trojan goes, why can't we have peace? And Leon says, expenditures this and profits that. It's pretty exhausting. Leons pushes the green frame into a corner. On the ground, Socius is helping Alec. The two opposing forces with barely any life in them help each other stand. Socius yells out to Trojan, telling him to never give up on achieving peace. The two fall over. Lucas and Gist comes back to the EA base. Lo wants them to help out and unload some of the Raigo equipment. Lucas realizes the power of the unit and wonders if they can run the region if they create a fourth army. Lo is confused about what he is talking about until Lucas pulls out a gun and shoots him. He tells Gist to load up the new equipment onto their cargo ship. 
they're going to do things like they used to do in the old days. Now the stuff on Lucas's face is a bomb that Fujiyama implanted into him because they didn't trust him. However, it appears he had it deactivated this whole time and left it on just for show. He rips off the bomb and they take off with their new weapons. Later that night, Lucas and the Raigo Gundam begins their assault on the Zaf base. The three defectors are now working together. Also, Lucas now has the Raigo Gundam. It's very abrupt. Serpent Tail, Socius, Trojan, and Leons are working out a peace agreement. Trojan gets a call and is informed that a fourth army has attacked the Zaf base. Guy and Elijah come in and tells them how they lost track of the Raigo during their chase, mainly due to the help of Lucas and Gist. They realize the three are now working together. Loretta tells them that they are either going to go to the Gorilla Village or the EA base next. Trojan informs his people to gather up and prep for an attack. Guy simply says Elijah's name and the two walk out. Without really saying anything, we know these two are going to join the battle. Kazahana wants to help out as well. Trojan plans to go out in the green frame and protect his people. That is his power. He finally realized he's better at defense. Good for him. Everyone wants to tank until they can't handle it. It's all about self-awareness. At the village, his Trojan gets the last of his people. Sue and the Kerberos Zaku warrior comes in. The green frame attacks the Zaku. As they fight, Sue mentions that he has seen these moves before. Trojan watches his fighting stance closely. He also recognizes the fighting style. He realizes this is the person that killed Barry Ho. Trojan takes out the left Kerberos Zaku head. Off in the distance, Gist and Lucas are monitoring the fight. Lucas and the Rego Gundam is now equipped with the Sunbullet Striker Pack. Remember, this pack is similar to the Launcher Striker Pack and uses a Plasma Sabat Bazooka. Gist is still rocking the Sigu Assault. Lucas decides to launch some plasma bombs towards the fleeing gorillas. Trojan notices the bomb, but he is preoccupied with Sue. Right before the attack lands on the gorillas, the plasma bomb is shot down. It is shot out of the sky by Leons and is a stray PMC custom using the beam pistol. Leons is known as a very proficient sniper and is the only real reason I could see for why he has those weird frame glasses. It enhances his sniper eye, perhaps? Leons, being Leons, says that his bullets are very expensive and they are not coming out of his pocket. Now that Leons is handling support, Trojan can now focus on Sue. Gist and Lucas are wandering off in the forest. Gist wonders if they could trust Sue, but Lucas tells him that he won't let anyone get in his way. The Raigo Gundam's bazooka is suddenly shot and destroyed. They look over to see a bandaged Gundam and a bandaged pilot. It is low. The hair is a dead giveaway. Should have hid the hair. You ain't fooling anyone. Also, Gerbera straight. Sue insults Trojan by saying that he will die by the hands of a man who killed his master and stole his techniques. The two dash towards one another. Trojan says that he did not perfect it. The green frame is able to dodge Sue's attack. He comes crashing down and Trojan grabs his mobile suit. The Raigo runs off while Gist and the Sigu Assault holds off the red frame cosplaying as Mummy Pharaoh Gundam from G Gundam. Lo acts cool and tells him that Gist shouldn't be wasting his time protecting a man like Lucas. Right as the two start fighting again, the bandages begin falling off the red frame. His cool guy persona is dropped and he bails. Junk guild members are not allowed to engage in battle unless you dress like a mummy, I guess. Gist is very confused by the entire situation. Meanwhile, Lucas is heading back to Zaf base. He equips the Raigo with the Caliburn Striker Pack. Remember, like the Sword Striker Pack, so too does this Striker Pack have a very big sword. The Zaft base should be taken care of by now, but he heads back to find that Leon's destroyed it and he finds Serpent Tail is the only one left standing. Leon said he does feel bad as he was supposed to run the base. He is currently communicating this to Lucas in an F-7D spearhead piloted by Kazahana. We talked about the spearhead in our coverage of the original Astray manga run. Go give that video a watch to learn about this fighter jet. Be sure to give that video a like. He also mentions that a demolitions expert did some damage to the base. Reed Weller is with some kind of demolitions mobile worker. I couldn't find any info on this unit, but my guess is that it is designed to, and get this, demolish things. Who would have thought? Even Rudolph, who originally hated Leon's and didn't want to work with any filthy naturals, played his role in this operation. Where has he been? Even this comic stopped caring about this guy. 
Guy and Lucas begin fighting. Back in the jungle, Kisato is tending to Lo's wounds. She says he was foolish to use bandages, but that is all they had to work with. She suggests they head out to their next job. Serpent Tail and Leon's watches as the Blue Frame and Raigo Gundam continue fighting. Just returns to the base. Lucas wants him to help in the battle, but just thinks that he is just using him as a shield. Hey, Lo got to his head. He is overtaking orders from Lucas. He takes aim on the Raigo's back, but Rudolph comes in and stops him from attacking. He wants to let the two fight it out. As they continue on, Lucas insults Guy's lifestyle as a mercenary, calling him simply a sellsword. Guy tells him that he fights for those who can't fight. He fights for the powerless. That is what it means to be a mercenary to him. Guy goes in and impales the Raigo Gundam with his arm blade right in the cockpit, killing Lucas. Back in the jungle, Trojan tells Sue that he was able to copy his master's form, but not the substance. Barry Ho's strength was his desire to protect people. That is what Sue was missing when he fought. He wonders if that is something he could learn. Trojan tells him that he could teach him a thing or two. He looks down to see Sue's eyes closed. Now considering this is the last panel we see of Sue, I would assume that he said his final words to Trojan and then died right there, but it is so abrupt and vague that I am not entirely sure. Trojan looks up and says that everyone can learn a thing or two from Master Barry Ho. Back at the base, Guy and members of Serpent Tail head out on their next mission. And that will conclude Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Frame Estrays. It has been really great filling in the gaps of what Serpent Tail has been up to, but overall this might be the weakest run in the Estrayverse so far. The story seems to want me to root for Trojan, but the whole time Leon's was simply trying to get the job done, he was the victim in this situation and the story wants me to believe otherwise. Luckily the two eventually became allies in the end. The art direction is really what brings this issue down. I believe flow plays a great role in making a great comic. This comic doesn't have a great flow. We are constantly cutting between Guy and Trojan, and I am unsure of my surroundings throughout the entire comic. I also feel like we as the reader developed a relationship with Barry Ho over the comics. My question is why didn't he get the green frame? Personally, I think flipping the story would be better. Have Barry be the green frame pilot and protector of the village and have Trojan die, having this be the motivating factor for Barry. Rondo originally obtained a stray unit 4 and gave it to Barry Ho. It would have been nice to see some of these events play out in flashbacks, but we ultimately get nothing, leaving the reader in the dark. Also, I really love everything about the Raigo Gundam, but man, that face, that sad face just ruins it. Look at that face. Mm-mm. No. Although this is still a baby of Kodakawa, it was published by the Gunpla magazine Dengeki Hobby, and the overall tone felt a little off. Almost as though this was a giant advertisement for new Gunpla. Hmm. We will be finishing our coverage of Astray R and B before moving forward to Gundam Seed vs. Astray. However, this hasn't been translated yet, and I have yet to find the Raws, so it might be some time. We will eventually get through the entire Astrayverse. And that will do it for this week, coordinators. Remember, Zaft trusted a natural to command a base and left it in the rubble. Who didn't see that coming? Peace.